Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Game Bro Station for another episode of Brocast and a DuckTales episode review. Woo! This is a very special episode, everybody. It's Sky Pirates in the sky, which can only mean one thing. The return of that fearsome scoundrel. I, I did Scrooge McDuck <laughs> by accident. OK. It sounds like everybody anyway. Yeah. <laughs> By that fearsome sky pirate Don Carnage. I don't even know why I did the Scrooge McDuck like bad Scottish accent. <laughs> That's just your there. default accent. That's my default accent, I guess. Um, it was okay. Yeah. Like I think for all the fun and hype that it was as another you know Disney afternoon character crossing over after you know especially the little gummy bears alchemy cameo. Yeah. And even the few other nods to like we've heard Cape Suzette and a few other things a few times in the show's background before. Um, this one was kind of just okay. I wasn't like thrilled or disappointed by it. It was just. I was like, okay, we, we did this. Yeah. Okay. Just felt like another thing they had to check off the list. Kind of in a weird way. So the gang is returning from a successful treasure hunt, and Dewey really wants to tell everyone how he got this hat. Not because they all went on the adventure and they sh probably should know how he got the hat, but because we, yeah. the audience, don't know who got the hat. Yeah. I'm sure maybe it was. It was another one of those things where there were multiple plots going on, and Huey had his own plot, and then the other ducks didn't see it because it was his own plot. But, I mean, I've, I've kind of just felt like, okay, if the crux of this episode is going to be Huey just wants to do his old, you know, like, hunters or sea captain story on how he got his hat, you know, the... It's a tall tale, pretty yeah. much. He wanted to tell his tall tale. It was like, it was like that was the whole... Uh, I don't know. I didn't think it was necessarily good motivation for... A lot of the stuff that went on in this episode, quite honestly. Fair enough. They are pillaged by a bunch of theater majors, I mean sky pirates, led by Don Carnage, who is not in this episode voiced by Jim Cummings, but rather Hamey Camille. Yes, and um, I like Jim Cummings, John Carnage better. I mean... That's fair. I think he just gives a better performance. Uh, I'm sure Jaime is a very fine actor and is guest starring in this role, of course, but I mean... I don't know. There's just something to be said. Yeah, because trivia-wise, you said he was in the uh, Coco Pixar film. Uh, yes. We're not entirely too sure who he played. Probably the father character. <laughs> uh, he voices Panchito in the Three Caballeros show that leaked, remember? Oh, yeah. You mentioned that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's another one of his roles. But he's done other non-animated stuff. But I don't know. It just kind of... I did He kind of... In a weird way, just didn't he sound. He sounded kind of just like a generic voice to me. I don't know. Yeah, he definitely felt flat to me. I know we're still going over the plot synopsis, mm -hmm. but he definitely could have brought more energy to it, more inflection in his voice. So yeah, I mean, a good performance, just not. I think the thing is, Don Carnage is a very over the top character in his original performance, and this just seemed very subdued by comparison. Yeah, I wanted to hear more energy, more over the topness with this character and I didn't quite get it. But um yeah, so they steal the treasure and uh Dewey tries to get it back and then re captures the attention of the pirate crew by telling them his exciting tale of how he got the hat. And um that's enough for them to feel like, "Hey, let's perform a mutiny. He really cares about us more than our captain does cuz we're just backup dancers." Yeah. And so they throw him out of the plane which was still going forward, yet somehow he was still within range to just literally be uh, like behind the tree of where Scrooge and his gang fell. Yeah, that really bothered you when that came up, and I don't blame you. Distance-wise, it just makes no sense. I know, it's like they were flying around in a circle before they actually went home to their base or something. Yeah, and I don't know, that was just weird to me. He doesn't trick them into thinking he's not Don Carnage, because honestly, it was a really, it was like not even Team Rocket level of disguise. It was literally... I was really happy that they actually acknowledged. I was like, okay, we all know that's Don Carnage. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I was about to be like, if they run with this, I will be so pissed. Yeah. No, that was pretty funny. I like that. No, the fact that they actually acknowledged it was him was good. And I like that. It was kind of funny, too. At that point of the episode, I was telling Mike, yeah, you know, look at Don Carnage, uh, his character. He kind of looks like Crash Bandicoot a little bit. Like he had that, like, that, that jaw line. Mm -hmm. The hair, the head with the ears, and even his brows, the way they moved. It was like, hey, it kind of reminds me of Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, no. And, um, I thought it was cute. Anyway. This, this Don Carnage also seems a little more well-kept. Like, I remember in the old one, his definitely his, he looked a little 
just he looked the same, just a little more disheveled. Like I think he was even had like a piece of his ear bitten off at some point. Mm. Like he certainly looked like more like more like how the pirates actually still look in this one. Like kind of like you know dishevel a little disheveled kind of in a way you know like yeah, battle hardened yeah. if you will but this one was a little more clean a little more clean and uh not so battle worn a little more navy upkept yeah a little more navy upkept if we're going to be going nautical on this yeah let's go with that so just as soon as you know Hugh dewey is appointed captain they recapture the plane again because the the Sky Pirates plane can eat the planes and why they wouldn't just eat the plane and throw everyone out of the plane and then have parts and sell the plane even. You know, I'm not telling Don Carnage how to do a pirating job here, but, um, uh, you know, there's something to be said about musical number versus net profit here. Yeah, right. Sky pirating can't be a cheap endeavor. No, it, no, it's not. And just as soon as they were willing to appoint uh, Dewey as their captain, they soon are just as willing to throw him out of the plane because he just doesn't even want to see his family anymore and doesn't even want their ugly treasure anymore. Right. Which they mercifully then point out, yeah, we're we dance, but we're still pirates, right. and to- are getting ready to toss him more overboard when Don Carnage shows up and reunites with his crew because I mean, well, thirty minutes are almost up. Yeah, well, technically twenty minutes if you don't include the commercials. Oh, the commercials, lovely. Of course, they break out and they do a whole thing where the kids are running around pretending to be Dewey because Don Carnage has a personal vendetta now against Dewey for taking his crew. Sure. And um, of course, they turn because they had dramatic lighting music, dramatic lighting, and I think he said also played the dramatic like background music or something. And the weirdest part of this is, they escape by Dewey blowing the like tuning whistle, or you know, like the, you know, whenever someone like, oh, they, you know, whenever yeah, it's someone, like a signal. So like, it's time to dance. Yeah, and here they, it is. Beep. They all just start dancing, except Don Carnage, and Don Carnage is yelling at them, "Why are you?" Dancing, and I was just like, no, really, why are you dancing right, right now? Like, I get it, but I don't know. It seems like a very, it did not seem, yeah. very, it wasn't a very fun or even funny way for them to get out of there. It was a kid situation type thing. I guess, but even in like. I'm not saying that gives it a free pass. I'm saying that's probably what they were trying to go for. It's yeah, like, like, oh, kids will get a laugh out of this because they're dancers. Even in DuckTales, and in this case, in Tailspin, because that's where Don Carnage is from, they got out of situations with him without that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, that's really basically the episode. Is there anything else you feel worth mentioning, Matt? What were your thoughts on this? Again, not really super memorable, but wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was kind of hoping Don Carnage, or the captain, whatever his name is. Don Carnage. Because right now I'm just listening to the sound of his name, not uh-huh. so much how it is. But I was kind of hoping that there'd be like another little Easter egg in there saying like they were stealing from Scrooge, getting the treasure. Uh-huh. Maybe when they were counting the booty, they were like, oh, man, this horde is so great. Beats going after those bears all the time. Or something or like, we could retire to a tropical island in Cape Suzette. Yeah, just some kind of like not saying like, oh, by the way, they mostly deal with these bears mm-hmm. and tailspin. But yeah. they decided to go elsewhere. And it's like, oh, wow, we got a better bounty than we ever did with those Who guys. Who knew robbing rich people was so much e- easier than robbing cargo planes? <laughs> exactly. Just some, some little nod to that. That would have been nice to hear. Mm-hmm. But like, I think because like we said, we like the episode well enough. But I think the thing is. If you were to have not had it be Don Carnage and it was just some new Sky Pirate character or whatever, I don't think I would have felt any different about the episode, quite honestly, which yeah. is a shame because you really think bringing in a legacy character would have really plussed the episode a little bit more. Because like there was even Don Carnage was so special, so popular that he actually had a character in the theme park, and there was even some whole uh, Saturday morning special where they actually had him teaching the rules of pirating and all this shit, which led to a showdown of him fighting Captain Hook from Peter Pan. Oh, it was yeah. Like, yeah, with Corey Burton. I think it was even the first time Cor- Corey Burton took over voicing that uh, Captain Hook. Oh, that's cool. But it was just like, wow, they're, this this really shows how popular Don Carnage is as a character and everything. He, and it, I don't know. like, Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It was kind of a waste of opportunity, but I don't know. Maybe we'll get more down the road. Maybe. I mean, I was thinking about it ever since you told me about this character being from Tailspin. It'd be kind of cool, like, if DuckTales continues to get new seasons and mm-hmm. builds enough momentum to kind of build its own... Universe. Uh, yeah, I was, I was trying to think of a fancy name for it, but it's like... 
Disney TV universe. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool if eventually they have to tangle with the business version of uh, Shio Khan. That would be the coolest cameo. Because I have hostile takeover. I did not watch much of Tailspin, but mm-hmm. I remember seeing the trailers and commercials for the show. Mm-hmm. And every time they showed Shio Khan in his business suit, just kind of manipulating everything, I was like, that's actually kind of cool and dastardly. I want to see more of that. Oh, that'd be great. Oh. And then just have like Shio Khan, who's like, no jokes, none of that shit. Mm-hmm. It's like just trying to like mess with Scrooge and his finances. I'm like, that'd be some really cool stuff. Oh, that'd be great. God, there's the crossover we've been. Who knew that the crossover we wanted wasn't Don Carnage, but Sher Khan in a business suit? <laughs> that'd be. In so some ways, cool. that's almost more fitting, I think. That'd be really cool. But we'll see. We'll see. It really that comes down be. to how popular the show does. Yeah, well, season two is on the way. We know that. It was greenlit long ago, and we there's even the all kinds of fun stuff that from Comic-Con that relates to season two. So who knows? Hopefully we'll see Don Carnage again. Hopefully we'll see something from Tailspin again. Who knows? But I think for right now, that kind of sums up our okay thoughts on this episode. Matt, would you say so? Yeah, I would say so. Like I said, it's not a bad episode, but... Didn't really stand out to me that much. No, like it's especially now that we're getting towards the end of the season, either where things are kind of you know the balls rolling and everything, and we had so much fun with you know like last week's episode and other things where it was like oh this is getting really intense and everything. This one kind of just didn't deliver on a sa- as satisfying of a level, but still. It was a fun episode, more or less. Yeah, more or less. Mm-hmm. Well, join us next week, everyone, where we'll be resuming, reviewing episode twenty-one. The Secrets of Castle McDuck. That should be fun on a bun. It should be fun on a bun. Well, everybody, as Jared likes to have us say, where is that guy? I have no clue. I think he's still stuck in the pantry again. Oh, boy. Well, to be continued, folks. See ya on the other side.